So we're going to look at different light sources and shading. And I've put this orange on the shelf just so you can see an everyday object and how the light affects it. So where's the light coming from? You've got, if I zoom out of it, the window just here. And when you look at the orange, the lightest part where I'm pointing to is where the light source shines onto it. So this is the lightest part of the orange. And the highlights are here. So you can see how where uh, all the texture is being shown. It's the bright part of the orange. And the opposite side of the light is the shadow. So you can see on this orange, where I'm pointing, is the dark section. And where the orange is sitting, or where the object is sit, it casts a shadow. So you can see this part, that's the shadow of the orange. So if I move the orange and put it on the side, you notice the shadow slightly changes. In this activity, we are going to draw a range of lemons and we'll be choosing where the light source will be coming from. So in this lemon here, I'm just going to label up all the different light sources and where the shadows are created. So our light source is coming from here. And we know that because of how light this area is. So I'm going to label our main light source. Coming from here. And that produces the highlights on our object. So the highlights are created here. We have got our shadow. The shadow from the fruit, so the darker areas are where the shadows are produced. And the fruit shadow, so where it's cast in the shadow on the object on the table, this is this whole section here. This is our cast shadow. Let's put that here. So we're going to use our previous skills and we are going to draw our lemon. I have got my 2B pencil and my 3H pencil. You also need a rubber. So this is going to be my image which I'm going to create my observational drawing from and I'm going to use my H pencil because we know it's a hard pencil and it is good for the lighter areas. So I'm going to draw my outline of my lemon. I'm going to start from here. Again, we know it's curved and you should put really light pressure just in case we need to change the shape. We've got circular bit. down and um, remember lemons aren't a perfect shape because they are natural as long as it shows the shape main shape of the lemon that is what we are after okay so we're creating an oval shape here and we've got this smaller circle this side and another bumpy circle here. The sketching technique we'll be using is hatching and cross hatching. And we'll be using our different pencils, our soft and our hard pencils to create the highlights and the shadows. 
So I'm now going to mark in different areas of the darker shadows of our fruit. So if we look at where it casts a shadow, using my light pencil, I am just adding that in and it comes off the page because the shadow is quite large. And we have got a darker area here. So I'm just adding some lines in, which is going to help us when we are carrying out our hatching and our cross hatching. And this part looks like a triangle. And it's dark over this side. And it comes down here. So where my hand is, all of this part is dark. And we've got the light here, the light here, and our highlights here, which we are going to be using our rubber for. Just got to add in this section where it's dark as well. Okay, so once we've mapped out our lines, we can swap over to our B pencil. And we are going to start putting in our lines. So our hatching lines, remember, are a series of lots and lots of lines. So let's start at the top here and keep in the same direction of the fruit. This will help us make our object go from 2D into 3D to make it really pop out. So my softer pencil and our lines are close together because it is dark. So this part top here is the darkest part so you can push quite hard on your pencil. And where I've outlined I'm going to fill I'm using the side of my pencil rather than the tip. Because it is quite dark, my lines about the same distance all the way. So as our lines from further apart, it will show the lemon being lighter. So over here, it is still a shadow, but the shadow isn't as dark as over here. So using my lines, following that curve, it's just going to be a little bit further apart, like so. I'm now going to go down to this area. I'm following the contour, which is the outline of the shape of my fruit. Okay, so this section is in between our two dark areas. I'm using different pressure and my lines slightly wider. Doesn't matter some of my lines cross each other because we are going to move on to the cross hatching afterwards. Like so, I'm now adding my lines. Going this way for the fruit and I've gone 
curved round there because we know the actual lemon's a curved 3D shape. All of our shading is being built up of a series of them lines. We can go back to dark area and cross over. There we go. And we can cross our lines back over here. Okay. So let's move to this top bit. Again, this is our mid tones of the shade. So our lines need to be as far apart as here. So I'm just going around the outline. And where I'm adding in these really loose lines, this is the lightest part of where my fruit is. Just adding in little features. Okay, let's move on to this shadow. So I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. So if you're if this is a little bit blunt, you can do the same. And we are going to go back to the hatching. So we're not crossing over our lines. We are adding a series of lines. I'm using more of the point this time. I'm going right up to the fruit. Because the shadow goes off the page, we have to go off the page on our drawing as well. And remember, I haven't changed direction with the shadow. Right the way up to the fruit. Okay. We can observe what we can see in our picture and add the shadows of what we can see. And now I'm just filling in these gaps. So we've got this dark shadow here and I'm just adding extra lines to help it blend okay now we're going to use our rubber so our rubber is really handy to rub out areas where we have shaded Okay, so where the light reflects on our object, this part needs to be the lightest and around here and here. So we can use our rubber to help shape some of these lines. 
I'm following the same direction and I'm just rubbing out some of these lines to create the highlights. And again, there's a triangle shape here, which just rubbing up. I'm adding in lines, or hatching lines of the shape. Add a little bit here at the flex. Okay. And just here. And there we have it. So if we move our page we've got some space here at the bottom and we are going to draw another lemon but in a different angle and a different direction so let's have a look at this lemon here we know it is different from the previous lemon because of the shadow the shadow sits here okay so this tells me the light source is coming from above and that is our lightest part where the highlights are. So this is a bird's eye view of the lemon. We are looking directly down at it. Okay, so again, I have got my 3H pencil and I'm just going to draw the outline of the lemon. So the easiest way to draw the lemon is an oval shape. So I'm drawing my oval shape and it's not symmetrical, it's a little bit wonky, isn't it? And then we can add in this part at the bottom. Okay. There's my outline of my lemon. I'm going to add in the dark shadow here. Joins up to this one. The dark areas in my lemon are here and at the sides. And then this part is our light area. So following the same process I am using my B pencil now and we are going to add our shading using the hatching and cross hatching technique. So I'm going to add in my dark area for the shadow, the lemon. Because this is the darkest part, I'm pushing quite hard with my pencil. Okay. Let's follow that shape. Sharpen my pencil here. I'm coming all the way down to this imaginary line I've just added. And I'm going to follow the shape this way. Close together them lines, quite hard pressure. Okay. And then crossing them over, so I'm turning them into cross hatching. It is generally darker at these sides compared to the top. So,
my lines a little bit further apart in the middle because it curves around. I need to give that impression. Okay, we need to just go back to this area here and make sure that it is darker. So this is our mid-tone, so our sh the shading is not as dark as this, it's not going to be as light as this, so I'm going to use the side of my pencil so that I'm not putting as much pressure in, but I'm following these same lines we've done from this dark area, so I'm curving them round. Moving them around this side. And then I am crossing them. The lines are quite fine here, but quite close together. And this bit is our highlight area, isn't it? But if you look back at the lemon, this bit's darker than this bit. So we'll just add in our curved lines back around here. Now onto our highlights using our rubber. We've got a little bit of reflected light here. So I'm just rubbing out that area. To help, you can use your rubber to help blend smooth some of the lines as well. But just at the end of that shadow because it diffuses the shadow, it makes it less harsh. Okay. And then these side lines, we just need to improve them a little bit, slightly darker just so we can see the view is overhead, so the side bits. And There we have it, our overview drawing of our lemon. So you can practice different views of your lemon. In your packs, you should have lots of different images. So if you wanted to choose a different one and apply the same techniques, that is fine. But to end up, you should have a selection drawn lemons using them techniques.